Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. So first and foremost, uh, tonight I want to say that um, uh, let's have a very sober uh, engagement. Let us have a very sober engagement. I will present my, my, my case and um, uh, afterwards I will open the phone lines as usual and um, I will expect you to, uh, to call in and give your, your view. Uh, these are national matters and particularly the issue that we are, going to, that we are discussing relating to uh, the immunity of uh, the former president that issue is not just about Edgar Lung. Uh, it will be very wrong for us to look at things from the point of view of uh, our feelings towards Edgar Lung, because presidents will come and they will go. And what we said now, the precedents we set, will apply to other people that will, will become presidents. Oh, I haven't gone, I haven't, I haven't live on this one yeah so basically what i'm saying is that uh what we said now you know we might think that we are fixing edgar lungu or we are defending edgar lungu and yet i mean there will be other people that will become presidents and uh, leave the office of the president so some of these issues national uh issues you know, we need to be very sober in the way that, uh, you know, we, we discuss them. We shouldn't be emotive and um, we shouldn't be biased. Let us, let us try to have a very sober conversation around this issue of uh, immunity. I have posted the, um, the Article 998 and the Article 109, which refers to the issue of immunity from prosecution. And I want to emphasize that I'm saying immunity from prosecution. Immunity from prosecution. That is what I, I want us to, to discuss. But before we go there, I want to make a, a little reaction uh, to a video that I have seen uh, circulating on social media relating to uh, John Sangwa. Now, in that video, uh, John Sangwa is presenting uh, Ed Galungu as a, an indisciplined lawyer, that he used to be an indisciplined lawyer uh, who used to come to court and prepared, and he, he cited one incident where uh, Ed Galungu was not prepared and he, they had to help him. Now, first and foremost, uh, we need to, I, I, I want to state this, that for me, I am supporting Valungu, not because that I think Valungu is an angel. No, I'm not that hypocritical. I'm not that hypocritical. There is no way I'm going to come here and say Valungu is a, is a, is a, is a saint. Eh? Valungu is perfect. And yet, I was fighting with him when he was in power. I was fighting with him when he was in power. I was arrested three times during the time of Ayed Galungu. I was arrested three times during the time of Ayed Galungu. So there is no way today I will come out and say, no, the leadership of Ayed Galungu was the, was the best. No, 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 no. I refuse. I'm, I'm, I'm not like that. I am not that hypocritical myself. And uh, I will even tell you, that Valungu is not one of my favorite presidents. Yes, 
I'll tell you that. Malungu is not one of my favorite presidents. He's not. He's not one of my favorite presidents. He's not, my, not, not one of my favorites, but he's not my favorite president. In my favorite president, my favorite president, if I should tell you, me FTJ. That is my favorite president, you know. According to me, that is the best president that we, we have ever had, FTJ. You know, may his soul rest in peace. The point I'm trying to tell you is that I don't look at Walungu as a perfect man. I don't look at Walungu's leadership as the perfect leadership. No, I don't. I don't. I don't. So we want to start from there. But this time around, I am saying Balungu is the best person, you know, to lead Zambia. I'm saying that Balungu at this point in time, if God can even allow us Balungu to come back tonight, it would actually be very helpful. If God can even help us, I don't know how he can do it, but if God can even help us to let Balungu become president today, it would be very good. It will be very good. And I have a reason why I say this. The reasons why I say Valungu is the best person at the moment. Because to start with, Valungu has got the experience. That is the best, that is the first thing. There are, there are a number of people that I admire. There are a number of people that I admire myself. There are a number of people that I admire. I admire Brian Mundurile. You know, his leadership qualities, his intelligence, his soberness, I mean, his vision. I admire Brown Moon. I admire Given Lubin. I admire Given Lubin. And by the way, even before uh, when Vasata died, I was in the camp of Given Lubinda. I was campaigning for Given Lubinda to become president. I was campaigning for Given Lubinda to become president. And yes, we have had our differences. Uh, he, like anybody else, given Lubinda, has also his own weaknesses. But he is a great leader. Being given a chance for him to be president, I think he would be a great president. Given Lubinda, I think he would be a great president. A brand moon to be given a chance, he would be a great president. Uh, there are a number of people. Vasakwiva Skota. Vasakwiva Skota, I'm telling you, when Vasakwiva Skota was vice president for UPND, I, I, I like that man. I never missed to hear from the Zakiva Scott. There are a number of people, really, even when you talk about young people, I admire, you know, people like uh, Silavoy, Jackson Silavoy. Jackson Silavoy, I'm telling you, the guy was just born a natural leader. Born a natural leader, he has everything. He has, you know, the... the, 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 the 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 what what is this the oral the uh the yeah Satoshi Ukulanda we know you know he speaks nicely he speaks the oratory he 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 speaks well he has got a, he's very intelligent he's very mature you know among the young people eh? among the young people I really admire given uh what is this Jackson Silavo I admire the intelligence of Sean Tembo Sean Tembo is very intelligent very very intelligent guy i mean very intelligent if you if you read i read his articles the way he puts down the the points is is very brilliant you know uh but fred membe my friend membe i'm telling you uh, i mean whatever my friend i can even if i chan chan those are people that i would not even want to contest uh against you know he's a great man and his work can be seen in the country. There, so, and, and a number of them. Uh, Kalaba, for example. Wonderful. But Shalakateka, very experienced woman, uh, very mature woman, you know, I've interacted with Bach Shalakateka. She's, she's brilliant. Samo Imbolela, he's got the education. Uh, I mean, all these people, they are a lot of good people. Zambia does not is not lacking in leadership. No, it's not lacking in leadership, and the, it is actually wrong for anyone to think that you know only them can be a, a leader of of Zambia. You know, uh, bragging and 
moving with pride and talking with pride. No, I think it's very wrong. It's very wrong. Zambia is not lacking uh, in terms of uh, leadership. We have got people that can do Zambia and they can do much, much better than what Waka in the HDMI is doing. They can even do, some of them might even do much, much better than Edgar Lungu. Much, much better than Edgar Lungu. The issue is, at the moment, at the moment, one person that stands out, according to this moment that we are living in, the person that stands out, it's Edgar Lungu. How does he stand out? Like I've said, that he has got experience. That experience, I'm telling you, um, unless these young people that don't know life, but to those people who know life, experience is very, very important. Chimona Muchupo, some of us who have been in marriage, some of us who have even divorced, you know, we divorced and we remarried. I'm telling you, we appreciate the experience. We appreciate the experience. The experience that I've had, if I were to go back in my marriage, I think I would do much, much better. I would do much, much better. You know, starting, I'm talking about even with my first marriage. I would, I would do much, much better. And this is why in my second marriage, if I didn't have the experience that I had in my first marriage, I don't think my current marriage would be there. I don't think it would be there. You know, I, it's, like, it's like my first marriage was the training. You know, in my first marriage, I once lived in the Western province, and that brought a lot of problems. We, we lived separate, separate. And now we are again living separate. But because of my previous experience that I had in my first marriage, I'm managing this situation of being apart from my wife. I'm managing it quite well because I have the experience. Because I have the experience. The way I handle things now, in my marriage is different because of the experience that I have. And uh, trust me, I mean, we, we, we all learn, uh, you know, we all learn um, through experience. We, we, you need, if you don't have experience it, at least somebody needs to, uh, to take you through some of these things. So, Vaed Galungo has that advantage. Among all of us, all the wonderful people that we have, leaders, there is no one who has that experience that Balungu has. No one. And you cannot take away that from Balungu. That is one thing. The second thing is that to become president, it, is, it, it doesn't come cheap. To become president, it doesn't come cheap. It is not just because you go on social media and you have numbers and you think you can become president. No. It, I, there is a mystery. There is a mystery that many of us, from our human point of view, fail to, to understand. Many of us, from our human point of view, fail to understand. Which is the same thing that is happening with Ba, ba, ba John Sangwa. Ba John Sangwa, he looks at Edgar Lungu from his human, human uh, perspective. He looks at Edgar Lungu from his human perspective. And some of you who actually criticize Edgar Lungu, you criticize him from your human perspective. But there is a mystery that we all can't understand. We can't. We can't understand. We, we, we just can't. There is grace that we, we cannot understand. There is grace on that man. He doesn't do much. He doesn't talk the way we talk. He doesn't talk the way I talk. He doesn't talk the way a uh, Sakiva Scotta talks. He doesn't talk the way Sharakateka talks. He doesn't talk like the way John, uh, Jackson Silavu talks. He doesn't talk like the way Sean Tembo articulates his point when he goes on TV, when he goes on radio. Eh? Very good. You, you are like, yeah. But Edgar Lungu, the truth be told, he's not uh, much of an orator. He's not. He's not much of an orator. He doesn't talk much. He doesn't talk much. I was even talking to someone that Valungu, you know, he is a man that cannot defend anyone or defend himself. Valungu, he is not a man that can defend anyone and defend somebody else. Eh? He is not in terms of politics. Eh? In terms of politics, he's not much of an orator. He's not. He's not much of an orator. There are a lot of other people who are able to articulate and whatever, whatever. But there is just something about Baed Galungu. 
There's just something about Ryan Galungu. There is grace in that man. There is grace. And even Wahaka English, he doesn't understand the grace that is on Ed Galungu. He doesn't understand the Wahaka English name does not understand the grace that is on Edgar Lungu. Edgar Lungu has got this posture, okay, this posture where you can easily dismiss him. Adikwata ita posture ili ya bungwele. Ngo wa mwere shata, ah, uyu, tapali ufuadi. Ah, uyu, tapali. Adikwata ita posture. Na mfena mwika na murumu, Edgar Lungu doesn't intimidate. He doesn't intimidate you. Na mwika na mwanda msiti murumu mwa kwa. So, Edgar Lungu doesn't intimidate you. He is a very simple man. And most of the times he's joking. He makes his point jokingly. Whatever, whatever. Very simple man. Very simple man. But there is grace in that man. Which many of us do not have. At this point in time particularly. Many people dismissed Ed Galungu. Especially if you remember. Even when we, during the time of Sata. During the time of Sata. He was actually put deputy minister, deputy minister, then he became minister. But a lot of people did not look at Edgar Lungu the way Sata looked at him. Sata had like divine eyes to look, to see the grace that Edgar Lungu has. And I think God worked through Sata to bring grace Yava, Yava Edgar Lungu. So yes, I agree with you, a number of you. The point I'm trying to make is that a number of you may have issues with Ed Galungu. I agree with you. I agree with you. I also have issues with Ed Galungu. But when I think of who should become president at this point in time, considering what is happening, Ed Galungu stands out. Number one, he's got the experience. Number two, he's got this grace. This grace which mm, I don't know who has it at the moment. I can't point at one. And even uh, Haka Inde Ichirema does not understand. Uh, Haka Inde Ichirema really underrates Ed Galungu. And without understanding it or without knowing it, uh, Haka Inde Ichirema is actually the main campaigner for Ed Galungu. If there is one person, you people you like to you think that I am the main campaigner of Ed Galungu. No, I'm not. I'm not. I am not the main campaigner of Ed Galungu. The main campaigner of Ed Galungu is Haka Inde Ichirema. The main campaigner, the big campaigner, the chief campaigner for Ed Galungu, it's Haka Inde Ichirema. Haka Inde Ichirema has said, has campaigned more for Ed Galungu than I have. Haka Inde Ichirema has campaigned for Ed Galungu than anybody else has done. The chief campaigner, number one, it's Haka Inde Ichirema. From the moment Haka Inde Ichirema took over power, he has never seized an, he has never seized, uh, let go of an opportunity. He has never failed to seize an opportunity to talk about Ed Galungu. He has never, from day one, he has been talking about Ed Galungu. Ed Galungu is out of state house, but him, he has just been talking about him. He has just been talking about him every day, almost every day. Almost every day, Haka Inde Ichirema talks about Ed Galungu. Almost every day, he talks about Ed Galungu. And he has continued, even some of these things that he does on Ed Galungu, he actually campaigns for Ed Galungu. Ed Galungu, you know, if, if into, I campaign, he doesn't campaign himself, but things just campaign for himself. I'll give you an example, a very typical one. A very typical one. You see, Eddie Galungu, the other day, he left going to, to the copper belt. Eh? Going to the copper belt, he decides to stop in Kawe to visit the bishop. How many of you knew that Ed Galungu was on his way to, Kau, to, to the copper belt? How many of you? Even me, I didn't know. Even me, I didn't know. As, as, as much as I you know, know about uh, Ed Galungu and this and that. But I didn't know that on that particular day, Ed Galungu was moving from Lusaka, going to the Copper Belt. I didn't know. I didn't know Ed Galungu is going to visit the bishop. I didn't know. But what happened? As he was arri arriving in Kawe, he turns to go to 
uh, you know, to see the bishop. But the police came to know about it, of course. They must have been alerted by the roadblock. Yeah, uh, whatever, that, that place before you reach camp. The police knew about that one. Oh, if the is on the way. They started waiting for him in Kabwe. They started waiting for him. As soon as they entered Kabwe, they started following his vehicle. He goes to the bishop. We saw what all happened. Now, if you look at it from a political point of view, from a political point of view, what do you, do, what do you think in terms of Edgar Lungu's popularity on that particular day? Edgar Lungu's popularity went up. It went up on that day. Did Edgar Lungu plan it? No. Was it part of the strategy? No. Vaka Pokola made us to be, to be talking about it. That trip ya kwa Edgar Lungu. Vaka Pokola campaigned for Edgar Lungu that day. Big time. Because it was all over and it has even gone viral in, even in other countries. Some of us in it, because each time I present my case about Zambia, people are going around to check what is happening in Zambia. And those are instances which are coming up. So without Edgar Lungu's effort, that day, that day, the state campaigned for Edgar Lungu. If they had not followed him, imagine if Baraba Kapokola, Edgar Lungu was traveling. If Baraba Kapokola well, didn't follow him, Kuliba Bishop, he would have seen the bishop quietly. We wouldn't have even known about it. He would have come out of there and he would have even continued his journey going to the Copper Belt. We wouldn't have even known. It wouldn't have been news. But the state, Bahaka in the Ishirema, you know, Bahaka in the Ishirema, made that event an eventful eh? made that occasion eventful where up to today we are talking about it if they had not touched him if the police had not come in we wouldn't have been talking about it but today we are talking about it it is flooding all over social media edgar lungo collected he collected he collected credit political credit whilst Bahaka in the lost credit out of that. That's why if I had worked with you, I would have really helped you. Because nothing. Nothing. Political strategy, political whatever. You make so many mistakes. So many mistakes. But these mistakes you make that is the grace I'm telling you, which you give on Edgar Lungu. So I've given you that example that this man is just blessed. He's just blessed. There are other instances, again, which we can talk about where really we don't need to talk about Edgar Lungu. I mean, who cares? What? The guy is jogging. Let him jog. But you go and issue a statement. No, he has to stop jogging. Grace, you make the man popular. You make the man gain sympathy. But Haka Inde Ichinema thinks that he's discrediting Edgar Chagwalungu each time he talks about him. Each time he talks about him, he thinks that he's discrediting him. But no, you are actually building the popularity of this man. You are building his, the popularity. So, indirectly, Vahaka Inde Ichirema has been campaigning for Edgar Lungu and he's still doing it. And he's still doing it because I know that they are planning other issues relating to arresting Edgar Lungu. All that is very good. They, I know they are planning to bar Edgar Lungu from contesting. But they will not succeed. But all that hula baloo that they will create by the fact that they will come up to say, no, Edgar Lungu does not uh, qualify to stand. There will be so much talk everywhere, within and outside Zambia, that will be campaign. But at the end of the day, because of the confusion that will arise out of that, Edgar Lungu will be made to be on the ballot. But they would have already campaigned him, they would have already made him president. Denying Edgar Lungu a chance to contest an election is basically making Edgar Lungu president. Even the issue of Mao Sampa, even the issue of Mao Sampa, all that injustice, all that injustice, 
has worked in the favor of Edgar Lungu. Mao Samba, yes, he has a certificate of PF. But really, who look at Mao Samba as the president of PF? Who looks at Mao Samba? He's just Mao Samba and he will never change. He will always be just Mao Samba. He will never be president of PF. President of PF, when you talk about president of PF, all of us will think about Edgar Lungu. So all these things, when you put them together, really, the man has the grace. We may all be gifted. We may even be better than Edgar Lungu himself. From our eyes, looking at, you no, know, from a human eye, from the eye of uh, uh, John Sango, from the eyes of uh, John Sango, yes, he may look at him to say, ah, this man, but le somwine, le somwine, Edgar Lungu, eumu pala. Le somwine, ali pala, Edgar Lungu. And we can't understand it. Baka in the can't understand it. He thinks he, he can he can he can suffocate Ed Galungu. He can put Ed Galungu in the bottle. But no, the more he tries to do that, the more Ed Galungu goes up. The more Ed Galungu goes up. Now he has reached a point where it is just a matter of following the process. It is just a matter of following the process. Otherwise, today, today, Ed Galungu is the president of Zambia. Today. In terms of support, in terms of influence, he is the president of Zambia. It is just the process we just need to go for that election and vote for him. But otherwise, even the, even the votes that he's going to get, it's a landslide. It's a landslide. So that is the situation. But look, but John Sangwa talks, you know, berates Edgar Lungu. Like, you know, like it was nothing. But no, no, it is not true. It is not true that Edgar Lungu was nothing. It is not true that Edgar Lungu was nothing. It is not true to think that Edgar Lungu was just the same compound Muchawama. And then from nowhere, Vasata by Samsonta, Walavalankane, a secretary general, and whatever, Vasata Vafwa, and he becomes president. No, no. It is not, it is not true. Edgar Lungu has got his own political journey, has got his own uh, career uh, uh, um, journey that he had gone through. Because especially you young people, you want to discredit Edgar Lungu like he's a nobody. Like some of those pictures that you, you post, like, like it was just nothing. But no, no, Edgar Lungu is not in your class. Ed Galung is not in your class. Not even Vajon Sang. I have so much respect for, for Vajon Sang. So much respect. And I will not do what he did himself to speak against Ed Galung in the manner that he did. I will not do that. Because really, I think we should have respect when we talk about, when we talk about each other. The manner that Ed John Sang spoke about Ed Galung, really, what, that was not disrespect. That was not respectful. Uh, especially when he, you talk about as lawyers, you know, I know that he, in the legal fraternity, uh, I mean, there is uh, that seniority, seniority uh, which is uh, highly respected. And I think by Edgar Lungu is senior to by John Sango. Uh, I think he's senior in terms of, in terms of uh, practice. I think he's also senior even in terms of age. I think he is. And so, as much as he may want to uh, berate the man. I think a little bit of respect would be good, would be helpful. Um, I, for one, I will not uh, disrespect Bajon Sangwa because, yes, I think Bajon Sangwa must be older than me. Yes, he's older than me. And Bajon Sangwa has also achieved a lot of things, which some of the things that I, I would never achieve myself. So I, I give him respect. I would never disrespect him. But the manner that he, dis that he, he spoke about Edgar Chagwalungu, that was very disrespectful. Uh, really, uh, and when you are talking about somebody being in discipline, I mean, you also look at yourself, how you are presenting, how you are talking about another person. In the legal fraternity, talking about a senior, a senior lawyer, you know, in the manner that what John Sangwa is doing, I think that is in discipline. So I think what John Sangwa then, I mean, he should check himself on how he, how he puts out things, because clearly, 
I would cite that one as in discipline. But anyway, to the young people that are listening to me, I want you to know that nothing comes cheap. Nothing comes cheap. You have to work for it. You have to do something. You know, you have to do something. You, you, it, it doesn't come automatic. I remember the other day I was talking to my daughter. You know, I was talking to my daughter. And I was like, no, you need to apply yourself. You need to do your best. And you will somehow be blessed. If you are not blessed, uh, if you are not rewarded by your own efforts, God will reward you. You do your part. And out of your efforts, you will get, you know, you will get recognized or you get the benefits. But if you don't get your benefits out of your own efforts, you will get the benefits from God because God sees and God does not let us suffer in vain. No, 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 no. God always comes through. As long as we are doing the right thing, God will always come through for us. So, even Ed Galung, he has his journey. He has his journey. Vahed Galungu, some of you may not know, he, he worked for Zesk, for Zisk, Zambia State Insurance. He worked for Zisk. He worked for Zambia State Insurance. From Zambia State Insurance, he went and worked for Bank of Z uh, for Barclays Bank. He worked for Barclays Bank. From Barclays Bank, he went to uh, to ZCCM, to the mines. He went to ZCCM. And at ZCCM, he rose to a, to a position of deputy uh, company secretary. Now, those of you who know who is a company secretary, that is not a small position. That is not a small position. But Ed Galungu was a deputy company secretary for ZCCM. And if you remember ZCCM, ZCCM was not a company to play with. Supervisors, now and Chombolo, a supervisor, Uriocha and Chombolo, they were big people. They were being respected. Just a supervisor, our group, Mbalecha and Chombolo, is a supervisor. They, they had so much pride. They had so much pride. And I'm saying this because I had my, my father, who is the, was the older brother to my father, who was just a supervisor. And, I mean, he was living well. He was living well. And then I had the uh, superintendent, uh, super superintendent, one of my uncles again. I mean, the man was, was big. Now, you talk about a, a company secretary. A company secretary in ZCCM. You young people who talk. Can you even afford to be a, a company secretary even in my company? Can you manage to be a company secretary? You cannot even manage to be a company secretary in my, in my, in my small company. But Ed Galung was a company secretary in the CCM. That a deputy, company, a deputy company secretary in the CCM, that is not a small position. That is not a small position. It is a big position. But that is a position that Ed Galung held by the time he was resigning, he later resigned to enter into private uh, practice. After that, he resigned to enter into private, uh, private practice. And when he entered into private practice, Ed Galungu did not set up a company like, in, like many other lawyers. He worked with the, uh, Mr. Andrea Masie. May his soul rest in peace. Mr. Andrea Masia was again another prominent lawyer, another prominent lawyer who was, uh, uh, you know, on a number of boards in Zambia, a number of boards, subsidiaries of ZCCM. And that is how, you know, Edgar Lungu got connected. And when Edgar Lungu resigned, Mr. Andrea Masie took Edgar Lungu, and Edgar Lungu was the lawyer that was uh, uh, running. Uh, his firm at that moment because uh, Mr. Um, Andrea Masie was was getting old, uh, getting sick, so he was not very active. But that is a company that Ed Galungu took over and ran that that firm. Contrary to what uh, many of you talk about and what La John Sangwa is talking about, Ed Galungu was actually an astute lawyer 
He was an astute lawyer. He was a top-notch lawyer, as he called himself. And he, truly, he was a top-notch lawyer. There was a magazine I was trying to search. There was a publication which was coming out about lawyers. And Edgar Lungu at one point was one of the best lawyers in the country. One of the best lawyers. There was a publication. I was looking for it, but I couldn't get it. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll keep on looking. Once I get it, I'll post it. But Edgar Lungu came out as one of the outstanding lawyers. He was a brilliant lawyer. And even this case that John Sango is talking about, that they, they defended the, a, a case um, together relating to FTJ and other people. The cases relating to FTJ were high-profile cases. They were high-profile cases. So if Ed Galungu was a useless, a drunk lawyer who he was not preparing himself, who was not winning cases, how come he found himself on the same bench with him? The, the most prominent, the state council, the brilliant lawyer. How come? How come? Because for them to sit on the same bench, it means that even these other a, 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 a accused people saw something in Edgar Lungu. Edgar Lungu is the one that defended the, the, the Dagama show, uh, whatever, uh, case. There is another case, a very big case, a company which from from Zimbabwe and the, and Zanaku, and I don't I, I I was trying to get the the Zambia Law reports, but there are cases there, and I will bring out some of these things. I will bring out some of these things. So the point I'm trying to make is that he was not a useless man, like you want to paint him, like other people want to paint him. He was not a useless man, because if he was a useless man. He wouldn't have gotten a job in uh, Zambia State Insurance. He wouldn't have gotten a job in Barclays. He wouldn't have gotten a job in Barclays. And when you go to Zambia State Insurance, you go to Zambia State Insurance, you won't find that, no, Ed Galungo was fired. When you go to Barclays, you won't find that, no, Ed Galungo was fired. No. He was going higher, higher in his career. He was going higher into his career. And that's how he ended up in the CCM as a deputy company secretary. So he was not a useless man. Young people, don't be, don't be misled. Don't be misled. Don't think that this man is a, is a useless man. No. This is a man whom we can learn something from. Whom we can learn something from. This man can inspire us. He can inspire us. How many of you have, have got positions like the position that Edgar Lungu held. How many of you, when you, so next time you want to talk negative about Edgar Lungu, ask yourself, what have you achieved in your life? Don't talk about even, I haven't even spoken about his uh, political career. I haven't. I haven't even spoken about his political career. So next time you want to, to, to talk, ask yourself, what have I done? As myself in my career, what have I done? Ed Galungu has got the record to show. He worked for this, he worked for Barclays, he worked for ZCCM. You cannot take away that from him. This is not a small achievement. From there, he was given to run a law firm and he ran it successfully, such that he was even recognized as one of the best lawyers. Which is why he even found himself on the same bench with Va, Va John Sang. He found himself on the same bench with Va John Sang. One particular incident or two incidences cannot water, cannot take away all the you know, efforts, all the accolades that uh, Edgar Chagwalungu got. It, it, you can't take them away. One incident. One particular instance, whether he helped him to say, oh, here is a foul, whatever, whatever. He can, that really, I think it is, uh, it is unfair to judge Edgar Lungu to say, no, he was an indisciplined lawyer. I think what John Sango is not, uh, uh, is not being magnanimous. He's not being magnanimous. I think what John Sango is trying to be malicious. He's trying to be malicious. But if we are going to be so malicious for, you know, to push our political career, I think that is wrong. 
This man has a track record. And yes, some of you talk about, no, eh, he was poor. That's why he stole the money for whatever, for, 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 eh, um, for, for this widow. Eh? He was just drinking. By Ed, by Ed Galungu bought his first house when he was working for Barclays. When he was working for Barclays, that's when he bought a house in Chawama. That big house that he has, big house with a big plot, a big, big, big plot. He bought when he was working for Barclays. He got a loan. And before then, he was staying in Kablonga. When he was getting that loan, because he was a boss in Barclays. He, he had a good job in Barclays. He was staying in Kablonga. Imwe vakapususu. Mwebala ndapali Ed Galungu. Eh, wakucha wama, wakucha wama. Uikala kui? Ed Galungu ili ale womba. Ale ikala muka blonga. Ili wale womba in his early age. Ale ikala muka blonga. Iwa uikala kui? Uikala kui? Where do you stay? Imwe you make noise. Eh, hey, Ed Galungu. Eh, hey, wakucha wama, wakucha wama. Iwa uikala kui? Ed Galungu ale ikala muka blonga. He bought a house in Chawama. He bought a house in Chawama. A big house in town and that's how he moved into that house and he moved into chawama because he had political ambitions he had political ambitions and he wanted to help the people the poor people and he wanted to live among them to help them he had to live among them and he was helping a lot of people in chawama he is helping a lot of people in Chawama, such that he actually wanted to stand. Um, he actually wanted to stand in the 19, um, is it 1996? Hmm? 1996, Ed Galungo was one of the first people to contest as an independent member of parliament. Independent member of parliament, 1996. When you, I think the one who won the election back then was Christian Tembo. He's the one who won the election. But Edgar Lung was one of the first people to contest as a deputy, as, a, as, a, as an independent. He was one of the first to, to contest as an independent. And so, so there is your story on how Edgar Lung found himself in, 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 in Chawama. It is not beer that made Edgar Lungu to live in Chawama. It is not out of uh, being useless that he stayed in Chawama. It is because he wanted to be among the people that he wanted to represent. And that's how he bought a house in Chawama and he stayed in Chawama. And the record is there. In 1996, he contested as an independent. Afterwards, because of the way he performed, he performed well, though he didn't win an election. That is how a UPND got him. And he joined UPND. He was part of UPND now. In 2000, in 2000 there was a by-election in Chawama. There was a by-election in Chawama. And, you, and uh, Edgar Lungu was UPND by that time. He applied to contest as UPND, member of parliament for Chawama. They didn't take him. Instead, they adopted somebody else. And that person, that person, Edgar Lungu was frustrated because he knew he was going to win. Because he had the support. He had the support. He was frustrated and he campaigned for somebody else. And the person that Edgar Lungu campaigned for is the one that won the, the seat. Later on, Basata formed uh, formed, uh, formed PF and Edgar Lungu moved to PF. In 2006, um, there was a, an election. 2006, he wanted to contest under PF, Basatawakan. They gave uh, Reverend Sampa. Reverend Sampa, who campaigned for Reverend Sampa? It's Edgar Lungu. Edgar Lungu campaigned for a reverend Sampa, and she won the, the, the seat. So, if you look at it, first he tried as an independent, he didn't succeed. Next, UPND did not adopt him, but the, he didn't support the person that UPND 
uh, put there. He campaigned for somebody else and he won. He became a PF. PF did not adopt him. The person that stood on PF, Edgar Lungu campaigned for him. He won the election. 2011 came. That is when Edgar Lungu was adopted and he won the election. So there is a track record. It is not like what you, 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 you want to present on social media to say he just came from nowhere. No, 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 no. He worked his way out. And this is the thing. This is what I was talking about. To say, apply yourself. Do your bit. Edgar Lungu did his part. And by the way, there are other things that Edgar Lungu was involved in. He was involved in other national duties. Like, he, you know, drafting the... Uh, this very law that you talk about, uh, what is this? This thing, uh, uh, media, whatever, whatever. Edgar Lungu worked part of that. And he also worked, I think, in the electoral reforms. I think, I think he did do did some job there as well. So this is a man that has saved the country. But we want to, you know, throw away everything and just want to present him to say, no, he, he was a useless lawyer. No, no. And even when you talk about the issue of, no, he got money for, from whatever, from this, from a client. I mean, this is a situation of, you know, that the, the, the Edgar Lungu was collecting money on behalf of this client. And he actually won that case. He won the case. And when the payments were made, the money was not transferred immediately. You know, because lawyers, they have to maintain two accounts. There is an account for the, for, the, for the clients and there is an account for, you know, the firm. So when you receive the money for the client, it's supposed to go in the client's firm, in the client's account. If it doesn't go there, it becomes a problem. And this is exactly what happened. So it is not a situation whereby Edgar Lungu, you know, because he is a charcoalwa, he just got the money and ate it. No. And this happens. This happens. But if you look at it at that time, Edgar Lungo, was, it's not that he was a nobody. It's not that he, he was just languishing. He didn't have a job or whatever. No. No. He even had properties. He had properties. He had properties. He, he had properties. He had uh, uh, plots. He had, uh, he had, uh, he had a, a house. And he had that promises, which is in the... In, in John Howard, you know, Palapa and feeding station. He also had big plots somewhere where he was selling. He was as good as, you know, a, a, a real estate a, a businessman. He had properties. They even bought, you know, that, that place, Pananikane, uh, at the Kachinga Petting, a Nexus, quite a Nexus, Nexus complex, next to. Uh, uh, next to vice president's office. Palapabela office was called. Yet Kalungu, they bought a, 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 a unit there. Never named Mutio Povadi. Never Scotio Povadi. And there's another person, another prominent lawyer. So really, it's not that he was, he was impoverished. Eh? Because we want to present him like he was impoverished. No, he wasn't. He wasn't. This is DJ Mutati. Exclusive. All right, that's all for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.